Hello, I'm Richard Bewes, and I'm greeting you from the Waterfall Studios here in Shepherd's Bush, London, England. Book by book, and I'm joined here by a little team. So, Dr Paul Blackham, whose home was originally in Lancashire, but now in London, and also by our celebrated guest, the Reverend Sammy Dagger, who is the founder of the Alliance Church in Lebanon and vice president of the Alliance Churches in Syria and Lebanon. Sammy, welcome to London. Richard, thank you very much for inviting me. It's a great honor for me to be here with you, and I do pray that the Lord will bless our uh, effort together. Oh, yes. Well, what we're doing is the book of Joshua, back in the Old Testament, and we're going to make the great leap from, uh, well, the Iron and Bronze Age, which is 1250 years BC before the birth of Jesus Christ, right through to the digital era in the 21st century, and to see if we can help that uh, transition to be made. I'm going to start by reading, if I may, in our first study from the Joshua chapter 1, and here we are, verse 6. These are, this is the Lord's message to his servant Joshua. So Moses is dead, now he says, Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law that my servant Moses gave you, do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. I think we'll start right there, chapter 1. And, of course, you've got your Bible in Arabic, Sandy. It's, now, over these next six programs, what we want to do is to understand the book of Joshua better. How do you yourself, just to start us off, how do you value the study of the Word of God? Well, uh, studying the Bible, Richard, is really the bread for any person who wants to live a spiritual life. You cannot do the will of God unless you know the Bible because God has revealed His will in His Word. And many people, when they read the Bible, they don't understand it and then they close it and they don't read it anymore. Was that the same with you? It happened the same with me. But my teacher told me, he gave me a very simple example. He said, Sammy, Imagine a cow went to a field and she want, the field was full of grass, green grass, yeah. but there was a poison tree there. And that cow was angry and she said, I don't want to, to uh, eat grass anymore. And she went, what will happen to her? I said, it'll die. I said, so many people, they die spiritually because there is a verse or two in the Bible that they don't understand. Yeah. And I suppose with perseverance, what happens is we begin to get the hang of it, begin, begin to understand what we're reading, and we do it with the help of others, of course, like we are right now. So, Paul, now here we are, Joshua. I mean, there's something significant about that name, isn't there? There's two things about it, the name Joshua. First of all, the meaning of the name, uh -huh. the Lord saves, which is the great uh, truth that we come across in the book of Joshua because we all sing songs like Joshua fought the battle of Jericho and things like that. But as we study, we'll discover it isn't Joshua that makes all these things happen. It's the Lord who makes them happen. But also it's good to know Joshua, the English word, uh, Hebrew Yeshua, that is the name Jesus. It's the very oh. same name. In some ways, it would have been great if the English word G Jesus had been chosen when this had been first translated. And that way, we'd have seen the... There's the a tie-up, isn't there? There's a tie-up. There's parallels yeah, there between is. the Joshua and Jesus. Mm. And we'll see that, I'm sure, as we go through. Yeah. And then, Sammy, what do we know from what we read here about Joshua's background, his training, you know, that kind of thing? Well, Joshua, he uh, was trained at the hand of Moses. He had seen everything happen with Moses, all the miracles and all the way in the desert that they spent 40 years, and Joshua was there to see the hand of God in it all. Yes. And so, as we, Moses, my servant, is dead, now, Joshua, you're it. You've got to take up the, uh, the reins for the future. Yeah. He was trained enough. Under, under Moses' hand to be able to take the people of God all the way through. I mean, that must have happened to you in your, your own life, where the people who've helped you, now you're training many others. I mean, you have led many, many people to faith in Jesus Christ all around the Middle East, all there in Beirut, at the height of the fighting. You started up churches. You must have had a lot of, been given a lot of courage to do that. 
Well, uh, really, our church in Lebanon is the daughter of the war. Yeah. And uh, people were coming in, in, in dozens to the Lord through, through the war, through the fear. And uh, sometimes, you know, we, we hate wars and we hate killings, but it results in a good thing that people are afraid and they come to Jesus for Savior. There's always something that can make us afraid, and especially in the venture of faith and of the Christian life. We, we know that too. Mm -hmm. Paul, when we think about these children of Israel and Joshua leading them, they've been wandering then, as Sammy said, in the desert for 40 years. I mean, that is a long time. Now they come to the Promised Land, they're on the border, and what do we know about this land? Well, it's an, it's an amazing story. I mean, it's been a long time, not just since they came out of Egypt and have taken 40 years to make such a short journey, but actually the story goes right back, Genesis 12, 13, 15. Abraham. Abraham. The Lord appeared to Abraham and promised him that he'd have...